Hi everyone, uh, this is Catherine from Life on the Scrap Beach and I was asked by Graphic45 to be the featured artist on their blog and I've created three projects for that and three video tutorials. The first is for this layout entitled True Love and the video will be about me putting this layout together with the Graphic45 Once Upon a Springtime paper collection. So I've chosen this photo of a friend from a christening I attended and I'm going to start with the blue paper with the butterflies and I'm going to spray just around the four edges of the paper with the Dazzling Diamonds Glimmer Mist by Tattered Angels and only a little bit of this paper is going to show which is why I'm not spraying the entire paper I'm just spraying the outside edges and then once I've sprayed all the edges I'm going to heat set it and you'll see that the paper is really curling and getting very crinkly so I'm going to iron the paper and this white sheet of paper that I'm putting over it is parchment paper and that keeps the iron from scorching the paper and it also keeps the iron from getting the glimmer mist on it and this is a dry iron I just bought at Walmart specifically for my craft rooms it's the cheapest one they had so now just to give the layout a little strength and to help flatten the paper even more I'm gonna adhere my background paper to this piece of um, lightweight chipboard and that is just gonna take out what is left of the curl so I just go slowly here you know and I make sure to line up two of my edges and then I just work my way in flattening as I go and I'm you know for the more curly areas I'll actually use a brayer to um, make sure everything's going to lay flat and to get rid of any areas that are bubbling or popping up because of the glimmer mist. And the glimmer mist just shrinks the paper a little bit. Um, you'll see there's a little bit of an edge of the chipboard showing when I'm done with this. So I just take it to my trimmer and cut that off. It's not a big deal. I'll just trim off that little edge there. Now I'm taking a tool called a spouncer, which is a stenciling tool. You can find it in the stenciling aisle of any craft, art, or hardware store. And it just gives ink a softer edge. I'm using it to apply color box fluid chalk ink in creamy brown for just a subtle distressed edge. And now I'm taking this um, paper also from the Once Upon a Springtime collection, which I've cut um, a quarter of an inch smaller than my background paper and I'm going to distress all the edges with the Sutter Distress It All and you can see that it really roughs it up and now I'm going to tear in three places just um, perpendicular to the edge of the paper a straight line into the paper and then I'm going to roll the two sides uh, around a paintbrush handle to form a V and I'm going to do that three times so that I have three torn areas. And I use a small paintbrush handle um, so that I can get a smaller curl. So you can see that it's revealing the background paper behind it. So it's best to do this with two-sided paper. And so now I'm just finishing up my third piece. So you can see I now have a triangle of where the blue will show through even more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere some lace behind that triangle so that I'll have this sort of um, taupey brown lace works very well with the collection showing in each triangle. And I'm just putting red tacky tape um, along the V and I'm going to use that to adhere um, just a little pieces of lace in each V. And this is just going to give nice texture um, and add a decoration and contribute to the femininity of the layout. So rather than put a whole piece of lace all the way along the edge, I just cut it on either side of the V. And then just to keep it flat, I'll use my ATG. And then I will, I'm going to take just the ink pad, the creamy brown ink pad, directly to the paper and ink all the edges because um, I do want a more intense look than I get from the sponsor. And then I'm going to adhere this down to my background paper. 
and this is going to form the base for my layout. And so you can see how it's starting to take shape there. So next I'm just going to take um, my hot glue gun with a fine tip point and I'm going to use it to adhere my rolls to the page so the paper rolls don't flatten out. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my photo mat and I'm going to actually cut several of these lacy scalloped squares from Spellbinders. And you see four on my desk and I think I actually used eight altogether. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them and sort of like a puzzle, I'm going to cut them and tape them together so that I can have a mat big enough for my photo that has this decorative edge from the die. So um, here you're going to see how I do that. You know, here's two pieces that I've cut. And I just take a piece of um, Scotch Painter's tape and I tape them on the front exactly the way I want them to adhere to each other. And then on the back I take a piece of Scotch scrapbooking tape, which is um, acid free, and I tape them together. And I just keep doing that one square at a time, building my mat. And it does take a little while, but it's just going to give a really pretty border. So here you can see I'm putting down the painter's tape for my last piece. And you want to use a pattern where it's not going to be so noticeable where your joins are. So just choose a pattern, like don't use a stripe or something like that, or you'll just drive yourself crazy trying to get them to all line up. Okay, so now it's completely finished. I'm going to just lightly with a pencil um, center my photo and then trace a line around all four edges of my photo. Because I want actually a piece of white cardstock between my photo and my mat, and also because I wanted my photo to be lower on the page than the mat, like it's behind the mat dimension wise. So I'm actually going to cut out the, the square that I just traced with my craft knife and then I'm going to put a piece of white cardstock behind it and then I'm going to put the photo behind the white cardstock so it looks like it's in a frame. But before I adhere the cardstock while I still have it just as a frame and I can easily get to all the edges, I'm going to use my spouncer on the outside edges and on the inside edges to get my frame completely covered. And then because my frame is very floppy and hard to handle, I've actually cut a piece of white cardstock that's the same size as the frame. And that's just going to give it a little more strength and make it easier for me to handle the, the whole frame. So I'm going to take my Tim Holtz ruler next after I adhere down my white cardstock. And I'm going to just with my craft knife cut in to make a frame that's an eighth of an inch in. So I'll have a, an eighth of an inch of white cardstock all the way around between the pink frame and the photo itself. So now that I've done that, I'm going to put adhesive around the inside edges of the frame and then I'm going to lay it down on my photo. Okay, now I'm going to add pop dots to the back of the whole thing and I use a lot of pop dots and the reason why is because over time while these layouts are stored in your albums, um, embellishments from the page opposite, opposite this will press against it and if you don't have pop dots all the way along the back it will cause depressions and your mats will ripple. So that's why I use so many pop dots. So now I'm taking glue dots and I'm using it to adhere um, pearls to the edge of my lace just where it's showing in the V. And I'm using two sizes of pearls and I'm going to alternate them. Um, so I'm going to alternate larger pearls with smaller pearls and I'm following the curve of the lace and that's just going to give an added touch of um, dimension, texture, um, shine, femininity. It's just going to look really pretty. So now I'm going to embellish around my photo and I'm taking a pearl and crystal swirl. It's a coffee sort of a color and I've cut a small piece of it and I've laid it down on my photo. And then anywhere where it goes from my base page up onto my photo mat, which is dimensional, I'm just going to cut the backing strip right there so that it doesn't have to be on two levels at once. Um, so it's going to be a little more clear on this second piece um, how I'm doing it. You see how I'm cutting it anywhere it has to go up a level just to free it 
so that each piece of bling is only on one level. And that will really help you um, have your bling won't have, it won't peel off because it'll be firmly attached in all areas. There won't be any areas where it's kind of hanging in, in the air. And I just go slowly and I just do it a, a little piece at a time. And I don't press it down until I've got it exactly where I want it. And I'm just going to add another little piece here. And I, I, this is this is how I always use um, these swirls. I like to cut them up and use a bunch of different little pieces all on my layout instead of using it as one big swirl. So now I'm getting ready to put down this um, lace trim, this crocheted trim, and it actually looks like a grapevine. And I'm just going to use um, the red sticky tape to put it at the base of the photo on my mat. So I'm just putting down my tape here. And then I'm going to peel the tape up and I'm going to add my trim. And that's going to add um, another just touch of the cream and give it, you know, more prettiness uh, to the layout. And you can see here there's this one little piece that's popping up and I don't like that. So I'm just going to go in with a glue dot and put a glue dot behind that one little piece that's popping up and get it nice and stuck down. So now I'm going to take these buttons and I'm going to show you a package right here. Um, I think they're from Joann's in the button aisle, any, probably any sewing store. And I'm going to add them to this Prima spray, which is the summer carnation, I think, because I don't want it to be too much pink on pink. So I'm going to use these cream buttons and I'm also going to use cream colored flowers to add some cream back into the spray so that it's not um, too much pink in, on that side of the page. And now that I've added my buttons to my spray, I'm just going to put glue on the main branch of my spray. And this is hot glue. It's just the easiest glue for something large and bulky like this. And I'm going to glue it to the side of my layout. And now I'm going to come back in and add my three white cream paper flowers from um, wild orchid crafts just again in three places to kind of break up all the pink and bring in some more cream uh, to the layout so I'm adding my third one there and I've now got my flower spray looking exactly the way I want it so the last thing to do is I'm gonna add my title and I have used the quick cut stardust font to cut my letters out of the same paper from Graphic 45 that I used for the background piece and also twice out of ultra thin chipboard. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue the one patterned paper and two chipboard pieces to each other in a stack and create my own custom chipboard letters that coordinate perfectly with my paper collection. So that's something you can do if you have um, die cuts that you can only cut thin things with. You can cut several layers and, and make it pretty thick. Um, and then now I'm gluing, I've glued the two pieces of chipboard to each other. Now I'm adding uh, glue to the top so I can put my pattern paper. And this is from the Once Upon a Springtime collection. It's the blue with the butterflies, just like on the background. And I'm going to do that with all of the letters in my title, which spell out true love. And now you can see the finished layout. So um, here you have the True Love title at the top, and that blue also helps to break up all of the pink on pink. And here you see how the pearls and lace look peeking into the three folds, which create a triangle around the photo. And then I've added this spray along the right and bottom of the photo to frame it even more with my paper flowers and my pearl buttons to break up some of that peachy pink that's in the spray. And that's also why I added the brown bling instead of a cream bling and also why I use that cream lace on the bottom.
So I hope you enjoyed this layout. There's going to be two more projects in this series uh, for the Featured Artist blog post. A mini album with the Le Cirque paper and a card with the Curtain Call paper. So check my channel or the Graphic 45 blog for the other two project tutorial videos. Thanks so much for watching.